With at this point 120 of my best friends, including these two Yahoos in the studio, Damon Dog, Shane Diefenbach on the ones and twos, making a sound look so pretty. And no Johnny Venerable today. We kicked him out of the studio. He was too insufferable, saying, I called it. I called Rondell Moore not being an Arizona Classic. Cardinal. Uh, and we're gonna get into it. The Arizona Cardinals pulling off a deal today for Kyler Murray's potential. QB to his backup. Desmond Ritter comes from the ATL to PHNX. I almost said PHX. We don't do that around here. We get that that in there. And uh, sending Rondell Moore packing to the East Coast. Uh, glad to see, hang out with every one of you. Chase, let's go. Oh, for sure. Michael Evans, Mr. J, Bradley Weiss, Chris, Jason. I see all you in the chat. Dan, Dang. what's going on? Yeah, but, you know, this is a huge day. We... Got a move this morning, a little move, and then we got introduced to six of your newest Arizona Cardinals, and man, I was blown away by those guys, but first we got to get into the deal that went down. Jonathan Jones of CBS Sports had it first, saying that the Cardinals were making a deal for Desmond Ritter to come to the desert. Uh, yeah, I mean, what? like I tweeted today, the the trade hurt around the world. <laughs> it was really just like the maybe the biggest move so far in the NFL offseason, uh, but seriously, I, Desmond Ritter, um, I mean, what can you say? He was, had a bad season last year, but like, he's a young quarterback that he was a rookie. He's still 24 years old. He's extremely cheap for a backup. Uh, it's hard to be like necessarily mad about it. Yeah. Here are his stats here. I mean, not the best season, 2,800 yards, uh, one-to-one -one touchdown interception ratio Look and that uh, PFF grade. It's pretty stinky, but, uh, like his Look at that PFF grade is mid. <laughs> I only accept elite PFF grades. If you're looking for a good PFF grade squad, the Arizona Cardinals are not. But I, I got I to gotta believe, Damon, and, and I agree with you. Like As far as Desmond Ritter, yeah, you, you were hoping for more. I think the Falcons were hoping for more when they tabbed them QB1 at the end of last season. You look at those numbers, they're not crazy bad. But we know that this game is more than numbers, right? But he's a guy that's going to come in and immediately compete for that QB2 spot. And that's something that... You know, as much as the Arizona Cardinals and you and I and Johnny Venerable know this, they they like Clayton Toon, but they needed they were going to bring in some healthy competition for him. They weren't going to bring in like a Jacoby Brissett. They weren't going to bring in a Gardner Minshew. They weren't going to bring in an established vet, quintessential backup, a la Colt McCoy. But they're going to bring in a guy like Desmond Ritter, who like Joshua Dobbs is mobile. Um, probably want more a little bit. Arm talent needs to develop as far as how he sees the field. Arizona animal mid. Yeah, I mean, th that's what you're going to get when you've got a quarterback that's making the contract that Kyler Murray's making. You're trying to take uh, you're taking some shots as far as who's going to be the one holding the clipboard and being the guy that's play away from being your QB one for a little bit. Our guy Deuce in the chat uh, just devastated right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, he's the biggest tune fan, the president of the Clayton tune fan club. Uh, I mean, but do you think that, th I mean, you mentioned Joshua Dobbs. Do you think that this could be like a precursor to another deal like they made with the Vikings last year where, oh. uh, like they do like Clayton Toon and they maybe see themselves getting an asset in the future for a Desmond Ritter type? You know, that's a damn good question. Uh, I think that if, if they make the case, I think probably Ritter has the ability to make the case more so than Clayton Toon. I think Toon has a little bit further to go. But when we look at his stats, like they, they broke it down. And, and I was actually kind of surprised because when you watch a Falcons game, it doesn't look like that type of production. But his, of his 17 of 19 games, he played, he completed 30, 322 of 503 passes, 64% completion percentage, not bad, for 3,500 yards, 14 touchdowns, and an 84 pass rating. And then you couple in what he does on the ground, 257, five tutties on 69 carries. And I, and I look at those numbers. 
And I think about what I witnessed from Clayton Tune in the preseason and what I saw on a horrific start where it was one of the worst performances since like kind of the uh, the forward pass took off in the NFL way back when. <laughs> um, it was – I think that Ritter – He's already kind of way ahead of schedule of Clayton Toon. And the Cardinals might have been excited about Toon and that he could be a, a backup quarterback for the next 10 years. But you can never be content with where your roster stands. And you're always looking to get better. And when Kirk Cousins goes to Atlanta and pretty much ends the tenure of Ritter and he becomes available. And you're like, oh, we can deal a guy and we'll get to Rondell Moore. And it's basically the, the Cardinals win just by positional value. And, and what Rondell for Moore's sure. lack of future was with this organization and, and bring in somebody that could vie for the QB spot, QB2 spot for years to come. Yeah, I mean, I, I was talking to Espo a little bit and I said they probably were just thinking about moving on from Rondell Moore as is and they felt like they could get something back for him. Or they just didn't see his future after this season with the organization. Um, but uh, as for Ritter, I mean, that like I know they were in the... <laughs> the NFC uh, South and yeah. that was an awful division, but he was performing at a level that was at least competitive in that division. He's he, he was playing at a level that was like, I mean, like if Kyler Murray was to go down for a couple <laughs> games and you're in a wild card chase, he might be able to scratch a win off yeah. Clayton Toon, We have no evidence that he could do that at this moment in time. Yeah. Dale saying it was a good trade for both teams. Some people are all, like, I get Isaiah Simmons trade vibes from this. People are saying that the Arizona Cardinals like sold as low as possible on Rondell Moore. And it's the same as I felt with the Simmons deal. It's like, have you watched him play? Like, where's his impact on a down to down basis? Uh, Dana Robinson saying, light the torch, we'll get to that. Uh, and how it kind of falls out. I love this from Chris Ramos. DoorDash drivers in Phoenix are scared of Ritter coming in. <laughs> I forgot about that. That Desmond Ritter was uh, one of the main, uh, I guess, spokesperson like with with DoorDash, and it's it's probably the worst, I guess, endorsement to have when you're a mid quarterback. It's like those those commercials when somebody like volunteers at like a. A, a, a soup kitchen or, or right. somewhere and they're like oh i like twitter's preying on them to have a bad game <laughs> that was like the ultimate what are you doing desmond yeah. no the guy's gonna be delivering uh gonna be living doordash or uber eats here because he can't stop throwing picks to the other team he's gonna be delivering absolute dimes to to greg dorch in a two quarterback formation you guys Kyle watch, <laughs> watch this space in the preseason this is going to be one of the all-time preseason performances by desmond ritter this is going to be you, you guys are going to see but that that's one like that i think that's where people can get carried away right oh I mean, for especially sure especially with someone like desmond ritter and desmond ritter or like he's a polarizing guy I'm, i bet you he remains polarizing in atlanta uh you oh. know and like there were teams all throughout that draft process when they looked at the resume from Desmond Ritter and they're like, he's a four-year starter. He's the two-time, what, AA, was it AAC? What was, what American. was it? The American uh, Conference, was it AAU? Can't remember. AAC, Whatever it was, think, not yeah. Power Five Conference. And, you know, he's making his way and he, he's, you know, making them an issue as far as the college football playoff. He's the only, he joins Kyler Murray as a college football playoff quarterback on this roster. Huh? How about that? Yeah, it's um, definitely similar caliber. <laughs> but people see it like they see the statistics and they're like, why isn't this guy a bigger prospect? Right. Yeah. And then people are like, they see this production, they see the success and then but they can't they they can't kind of differentiate like it doesn't translate automatically to success at the NFL at the highest level. Yeah. I mean, he just I, he like you mentioned earlier, I don't think he can process at a NFL starter level, but right. He has starter experience, which is something that we didn't have as a backup quarterback currently on the roster. So I think it's, you know, it, you can talk yourself into it. Yeah, you can talk yourself into it, but you, you, it's going to come down to he's going to have to at least really develop as a passer. I mean, he's you no know, Sam Howell, but you he's like, pretty close. Easy, easy <laughs> as the Seahawks. You just love to see them make a move like they did today and get Sam Howell. Yeah, is their backup quarterback one play away from being their starting quarterback? Johnny said he'd quit football if yeah. uh, if Sam Howell was on. I I want to I want to know how Johnny's feeling because Johnny is a, an absolute Desmond Ritter denier, he is. A, a, especially in college, going as far to say Panera Bread University. I mean, that's yeah. just disrespectful to the young man. Dude, he says that about like <laughs> like know. West Virginia. No, well, I mean, he, he, <laughs> like Desmond Ritter has. So many things against him in the eyes of Johnny Venerable, who we put in timeout today because we knew that 
maybe this moment was too big for him. It's a good platform for him right, right now. Uh, to come on and just go scorched earth on the newest member of the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, but like he, he came from a non-Power 5 school, put up some decent numbers, doesn't have the best throwing arm. Like Those are all things that, that Johnny is going to immediately just try to expose on a daily basis. But, you know, Desmond, like, he's he's decent when he's throwing the ball, and a lot of NFL quarterbacks are like this, where he's throwing the ball around the line of scrimmage or just past the line of the scrimmage, right? Like, short throws. But, like, once you kind of get to the intermediate, like, medium throws, it, like, he takes, just, he just dives. His production dives. It's brutal. It's like his completion percentage is, like, around 57%. He's thrown three touchdowns, five picks. He's not consistent. And I don't know if he'll ever possess the arm strength enough to get consistent in making those throws and, of course, deeper throws than that. Uh, but, I, I mean, that's that's really like if he's going to become the quintessential backup, he is going to have to be able to just run this system and, and get the ball into the playmakers' hands. And playmakers that at this point, outside of Trey McBride and Greg Dortch, and then in the backfield, they don't have really anybody on the roster. Yeah, I mean, I... Oh. It's not like Desmond Ritter was lacking talent in Atlanta right. to throw the ball to. I mean, his play caller stunk. He, he did. It's very true. He also didn't have a quarterback coach. Yeah. Um, I mean, but they had Drake London, you know, B. John Robinson, Kyle Pitts. Like, there's there's some talent there. Uh, but when you get Marvin Harrison Jr. in, all of a sudden that's way – we're talking about this way different, Bo. It's just – that's just – like, let's not talk about the receiving core without Marvin in the picture. That's, well, <laughs> let's lock it in. Let's put it in sharp. Well, and sweet baby Marvin Harrison Jr. continues to be just a darling on the Twitter streets. He liked uh, the trade tweet today from the NFL. Another wide receiver exits the organization. Anything that, like, creates or that you can connect the dots in Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Arizona Cardinals he seems to just hit that with a little like button, as you should hit the with a like button on the on this very show right now. Uh, let's hit some super chats here before we get into the Rondell Moore aspect of that. Yeah, leave a like as uh, Johnny is mining for likes there on our graphic. Deuce, uh, the number one and the founding member, founding father of the Clayton Tune fan club, T fifteen will prove you all wrong. Ritter won't make the 53. So he's saying that Desmond Ritter is not even going to make the roster out of training camp. And after the preseason, Libertarian Sasquatch, 199 Super Chat. Has anyone checked in on the one-tune guy in the chat? <laughs> there he is. That's It's Deuce. Deuce stands up and proudly wears his Clayton Tune 15 jersey, and he'll rep him. He's his ride or die. And uh, he seems to be doing OK right now. Times are tough. No, I mean, he, I mean, I thought it was I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. Really? Well, when you think about the stages of grief. You know, True. sometimes you, denial isn't it one of the first ones. Anybody check me I on mean, that? Number Fact one, check the I stage think. of grief. <laughs> Anybody got their their stage of grief rankings? I think <laughs> I think uh, denial is number one. Um, but uh, hang in there, dude. Let's, let's let's tier list the stage of grief <laughs> rankings. <laughs> let's, let's see where it is. But I think I, I know denial is up there for sure. Let's talk about the Rondell Moore part of this, and then we'll get to the Greg Dorch part of it, right? Rondell Moore was entering the final year of his rookie contract four years after they select him in the second round out of Purdue, a guy who, outside of his freshman season for the Boilermakers, was injured, right? He, he saw a lot of time in the training room up until last season. He, he did a good job. He had a couple off-season surgeries. We talked to him at Radio Row here in, in Phoenix at the time. He got his, his, his gnarly pinky figured out, no baldy pinky. Um, <laughs> and he's also he had surgeries on, on both parts of his groin. And he was good to go. And unfortunately for him, though, as many times as he was out there on the field, and you, you'd be hard-pressed to find a wide receiver that ran more snaps than Rondell Moore, there wasn't a guy that had a defined role with this team going forward. And, you know, I, he doesn't fit the profile. Monty Austin Ford, if he's out there on whatever dating app you prefer, whether it's Christian Mingle or Hinge or Tender, what else is out there? Uh, Bumble. Bumble. Uh, what else? Farmers only. Farmers only. Yeah, whatever it may be, J date, whatever it is, he's not he's not swiping on a five seven receiver. If you're not six feet, he's like most uh, co-eds in this country says, keep walking. So I think unfortunately for Rondell Moore, he doesn't fit the type of Monty Osafor or Drew Petzing, and they they found a deal. And otherwise, you know, he's a guy that bought into the system. He was willing to do whatever get carries in the backfield, be a gadget player. But when you look at his production, you're like, that's nice. Uh, you know, I see a sub four, you know, four, four, three, 40, 
but how they can't unlock this guy anyway. And, I, and I'd be I'd be hard pressed to think that they could anybody can unlock him. Well, I mean, you mentioned there that Monty doesn't want any short receivers, but do you think that maybe just after last year with having Hollywood and Rondale and Greg Dorch on the roster that he was like, we just can't have an overabundance of these guys? Because Greg Dorch is still here. Yeah. And Greg Dorch, fact, you know, seems like he's going to be a big factor in the offense. So I feel like maybe the push is just more towards we can have one of these smaller type guys, but we can't we can't fit all of them onto our roster at the same time. And from like a, I just, I, I think just Greg Dorch is just such a more efficient player. You know, I actually brought you some numbers, Bo. Okay. And I wanted to talk you about wrote them in a notebook. Like yeah. it's 1999. I did. It's because I wanted to filter out the running backs <laughs> and the, the website didn't. So I, 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 this is just tight ends and receivers. So solely okay. pass catchers, uh, yards per target. Uh, Michael Wilson led the team with 9.7. Rondell Moore was sixth at 5.7 tied with Hollywood Brown. Only better than Zach Ertz and Zach Pascal. So say that again. Uh, so yards per target. Uh, Rondo Moore is 5.7 tied for sixth with Hollywood Brown. Uh, only in front of Zach Ertz and Zach Pascal. Okay. Uh, worse so Zach than- Pascal, who is just known for his blocking and his special teams prowess. And then Zach Ertz, who was basically cut from this organization. Yes. Uh, you know, the top five is Wilson, Higgins, uh, Swaim, McBride, and Dorch for yards per target. And then yards per touch. Rondell Moore is actually worse. I don't know if running the football maybe makes that uh, more difficult for him, but uh, yards per touch, Michael Wilson also led the team with 14.9, destroyed everybody. Elijah Higgins, number two, at 11.6. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then you got Dorch at 11.3, Hollywood 11.3, so he picks his game up on the yards per touch. McBride, 10.2, Swaim, 9.4. Rondale at 7.8, only better than Ertz and Pascal again. Let me see this. Yeah. So, like, this is a big-time production here. This is our this is our graphic. Look at that. <laughs> Look at those stats. Can you guys see that? No, not no? at all. It looks great. That's the kind of stuff we do here at PHNX. PHNX like Sports, that. man. Look at that. Just just getting into it. Grinding tape, dude. Getting, <laughs> grinding tape. <laughs> getting into the weeds. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't like copy and paste these over. He was like, watch. He watched every game and like cut stats. I did. Yeah. And Excel spreadsheets. Yeah, yeah it was time. pretty. It was pretty. Uh, it was a pretty big operation. One thing that this also tells me is Michael Wilson's going to be a problem. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Michael Wilson, uh, thirteen games played, also, and he, he just—I mean, clearly, just extremely efficient last year right. when he was throwing the football. And his his availability is going to have to be something that he, he gets, you know, better at. You know, obviously coming like Rondell Moore wasn't available a lot in his entire tenure in college, but he did okay. He, he had a stint there where, where he missed some time. But Michael Wilson, as he said, yards per target, 9.7 yards per touch, 14.9. You got to like that. And, and for Greg Dorch or for Rondell Moore, who was up against it, it was it was way worse. Those are probably up from where he started in the clip, poor Cliff Kingsbury offense. Uh, Rondell Moore was just it, it was a Steve Kime special. And if you think about players that were drafted by Steve Kime outside of Kyler Murray, they're going way of, uh, of of Avengers. What is it? It's not Endgame. What was the one where they started fading away? Uh, Infinity War. Infinity War. That's why I got a young guy like Damon on on the show here because he's gonna keep me in check. No, Johnny would know that. Oh, Johnny. Johnny would be like, well, actually, yeah. <laughs> well, it was actually, yeah, that's factually incorrect. Uh, and according to uh, most. People who the, the 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 comics didn't actually say that this is actually <laughs> right. what happened. I'll show you right here. <laughs> Sorry, James. I'll I'll, I'll I'll get my action figures out and, and show you wow. exactly what it should have been. You guys, Johnny can't defend himself, and <laughs> we're just going crazy, just teeing off. <laughs> so we we need we need somebody to stop the fight right now. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, let's uh, throw the white flag in on a furry guy. Uh, Johnny Venerable, who would love to be here. He'll be back on this very podcast tomorrow. Uh, we wanted to crack these mics, get the get the cameras on a little bit earlier. Uh, but unfortunately, with uh, the press conferences that went down in Tempe, we got to know six new Arizona Cardinals, Sean Murphy Bunting and Mac Wilson, the new two defensive linemen, DJ Dallas. Uh, we couldn't get on air as quick as we wanted to after the deal went down. But uh, we'll, we, uh, we'll, we'll get into what we witnessed in Tempe. But we're, we're on air now, enjoying it. Everybody's crushing in the chat. Uh, I want to tell everybody, oh of course. Oh, my God. The, what? the Johnny Defenders, the White Nighters are here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love how much they love yeah, Johnny. They do, and they should. We love Johnny as well. Sly, we don't slander Johnny on his program. You're right. It's his show. Oh, yeah, all. it is. It is Johnny's it show. It is his right. show. Tommy Felix, we still love you, JV. 
Aaron saying, love the JV trolls, ha ha. Ken, I knew Johnny had action figures. Yes, he does. Absolutely does. He does. I just want the record to show I didn't say anything about Johnny. That was a Shane and, uh, yeah. and Bo situation. Right. And me and my boy Johnny were still... You are. Yeah. You guys are tight. Yeah, for Johnny. sure. Right. You and I share in a hotel room, <laughs> right? Being road dogs. Right. Being road dogs, he he tends to just... Who he loves his JV. Who shared a hotel room with you first, Bo? You did. Yeah, that's right. Shane, you're, my, you're the original road dog. Marcus saying Johnny isn't wrong. He's not. He's not. And it pains me to say that, but also uh, we wear a lot of pride, a badge on our sleeve around here that, that Johnny leads the way in knowing what's going on around this Arizona Cardinals team. Whether it was Isaiah Simmons, whether it was the, the Josh Dobbs trade, and that Dobbs was going to be the starter, even though he came uh, with only days until the start of the regular season. He's been leading the charge on all, all of these things. Lou T, the Johnny Venerable show starring Bo and David, just for now, just for one <laughs> one day. And then tomorrow, uh, we're going to do a little uh, Johnny and Bo in the morning, PHNX Cardinals morning drive uh, at 10 a.m., special showtime tomorrow. Uh, 450 people in the chat. Like this video. Uh, drop a comment. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, Got to tell you about BetMGM. Get $5. Bet $5. Get $150 instantly. Just download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android and visit BetMGM.com. Sign up. Deposit at least $5 into your newly created account. Place a wager of the amount at least 5 bucks, standard odds price. And once you place that bet, you're going to receive $150 bucks in bonus bets regardless of of your outcome or wager. Sign up for BetMGM. Use the bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least 5 bucks. You'll receive that $150 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome. Check out the show notes for details before Damon tells you about it. Shane, we, what do you like as far as the Suns game tonight? Oh, I mean, there's there, there's, a, there's a lot to like. Uh, are you talking about like a, a certain pick or... Just Sun Celtics. Uh, I mean, you're getting around the same odds on BetMGM as you were when they were here without Book. Now Book is back in his favorite TD Garden. Um, so I like I like the Suns to cover that five and a half spread tonight. All right, Book is back. They're back where he dropped seventy. Shane's been hot too. Yeah, he's been on a little bit of a heater. Now, Damon, let him tell you about in our disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369-NEW-YORK. Call one 800 327 5050 Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA. 1-800-270-7117. For confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023 Puerto Rico. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Mississippi, New York, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Uh, <laughs> this is what you're gonna do. You're going to win money on BetMGM mm -hmm. using the PHNX uh, bet show as your help, as your guide to make some money. Uh, and then you're going to stop in at a Circle K, maybe an AZ Lottery location. You're going to mm -hmm. pick up yourself some scratchers. You're going to win some more money because that's what we do here. We like to gamble a we little do. bit. Me and Shane in particular, uh, we're always fighting over it. I actually have an AZ Lottery scratcher in my car. It was a winner. Uh, All right. Yeah, I got my money back on that one. But uh, yeah, Arizona Lottery, they have a new... Uh, promotion going on right now called the Arizona Adventures and there's three big ways to play uh they got three iconic landscapes uh that have that are featured on their lottery tickets mm -hmm. Picacho Peak Monument Valley and Camelback Mountain that have prizes up to fifty thousand dollars uh and uh you can also check out their geolocated adventures in 10 destinations across the state from Flagstaff to Yuma down to my beautiful Tucson That's right at uh, Chuck Huckleberry Loop in Pima County. Yeah. Yep. That's one of the locations Shut on here. So uh, you're going to want to get involved in that. Uh, so Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It is also about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Love it. Yeah. Talk, stop it in a circle K, getting a couple scratchers and making it easy, even easier than that, just going online and also getting to explore our great state. Uh, by participating in this great promotion. It's Absolutely. Like a, yeah, it's just an excuse to go out and like get into nature, walk around a little bit, get touch some vitamin some, D. Touch some grass. Yeah, touch some grass. <laughs> you become one with nature. It's great. Chat, be honest with yourself. Have you touched grass today? Be honest. That's right. Let's check out some of these super chats. We've got five of them right now. Thank you so much. Uh, topic 64, Desmond or Dobbs, let's go DR. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of Dobbs to Desmond's game, right? He's got the he's got kind of the mobility, probably a little bit more of a polished passer. 
but still you want to see a little bit more down the field from both of those guys. Uh, Shane, you're, you're disagreeing with that? No, oh, yeah, they're both mid. Yeah, that, so, yeah and that's it's, it's solid. I, I don't think you're ever going to like, I'll never, like even if he starts lighting up in training camp, like a need to keep that baseline. I just think that that's, that's where it is. Let's not, yeah. let's not kind of. Dobbs is definitely more of an athlete. I let's would not say. fool ourselves, but, right? But Ritter could scoot. He could scoot for no. sure. I mean, Dobbs had that purple patch for sure. But and, like, and Ritter, Ritter, Ritter's more of the the game manager type role. I feel like he's more of a he's more of a let the game come to him and not you know attack. But the, both both styles work sometimes. <laughs> yeah, didn't work against <laughs> Alabama. I not, think you know yeah. Dobbs. I mean, he came back down to earth a lot. And that was kind of similar, I feel like, to how Ritter was playing when he was playing yeah. pretty bad. Dobbs was out of this world. He for like four weeks in his in his rocket, the past or not that he built. Yeah, Deuce. The chances of Ritter beating out Tune for QB two are about as good as JV <laughs> eating an entire steak. He would show up and produce. He targets Dorch too. Yeah, mate, we'll see if De- if Desmond Ritter. Like, I don't know if he's going to have the same opportunity as Tune because like Greg Dorch is going to be playing more with the ones than he did with the twos with Tune back in training camp preseason and the early goings of, of last season when Greg Dorch had to fight and crawl, uh, you know, claw his way into the into some offensive snaps. Um, I, you know, I, I Greg Dorch. Let's talk about that. Greg Dorch with the move of Rondell Moore. Going to Atlanta, mm-hmm. it leaves the Arizona Cardinals with three wide receivers, basically two. You've got Greg Dortch, who can run any kind of route tree out there for the Arizona Cardinals, and then you've got Michael Wilson, who's probably your Z wide out, but he knows every route tree as well, which is good. It's valuable. And then you got Zach Pascal, who's played you know in the slot a little bit. He's versatile as well, but he's primarily going to be utilized in the run game. Uh, didn't do much. You, you ran off some statistics, and he's bottom of, of all of those he's stats. Pretty bad at receiver. <laughs> and his limited playing time. So Arizona Cardinals are going to have to make some moves at the wideout position. But one thing's for sure, Greg Dortch, as, as Monty Osford said at the Combine, he's made plays for this organization. He's going to continue to make plays for this organization. And it now feels like with the acquisition of DJ Dallas and free agency, that Greg Dortch is poised to have a bigger role in this offense. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely what it signals. And... I think the Rondale trade just signals how much faith they have in Greg Dorch, really. I mean, you couldn't have asked the guy to do more with his opportunities last year. Like he was, he, he, he had very, very little uh, throughout, you know, the majority of the season. We were all clamoring for it. Uh, Every time he'd get a touch, he would, he would, you know, do something efficient as, you know, check out the uh, phnxlocker.com. Look out for our Greg Dorch shirt that we have. Uh, Of course, the Greg Dorch podcast we yeah. did last year uh and uh yeah i mean it's just yeah i like that little greg <laughs> popping out just peeking right there um i just yeah greg dorch just like how could you not love the guy every time he touches the football just electricity yeah i mean he he continues to get the separation necessary for a player of his size uh to, to get open and, and get fed the ball he's so elusive in in space it, yeah. it's really crazy i mean britain golden just like even when he's not returning punts, even though he's not returning kicks, you still try to set him up like a return man, just where he can get in space and make people miss. And, and one of the primary examples of that is late in the game against Chicago on uh, Christmas Eve, where he made guys look foolish right before they had to go home and, and celebrate Christmas with their families and, and look them in the face and say, yeah, I made he made me look like a fool on uh, national television it was like shaping up to be a really good christmas for every player on the bears there yeah. for a little bit i and mean then, they got the dub and then greg dorch had to embarrass like three defenders on his way out and they just had to feel bad yeah, about themselves I'm, that was kind of me you're gonna get the you're gonna get the victory but uh i'm gonna i'm gonna take something for myself yeah here on uh christmas eve right before santa comes let's continue with these uh super chats here um topic 64 draft shows are starting to say mhj will be the number one pick the number four pick will be Rome. Um, I I disagree with that. I, I, I the way I always base this stuff is with with sports books, mm-hmm. and Vetup GM has Caleb Williams slotted, overwhelming, overwhelmingly yeah. favorite. Is he even on the board? The, yeah, minus two thousand. Not a lot, not a whole lot of value there. Um, yeah, I I and I disagree. Like I was just somebody just texted me this. Before the show, they said, what are the chances that 
you know, Chicago remains with Fields and takes Marvin. It's like, what what else do you need to know? Guys like Sam Howell and Desmond Ritter found new homes before Justin Fields. Now, I know it's a little bit more complicated when you're in Chicago and you're trying to get his market value up a little higher. But what the reports are is teams around the league viewed more sure things as Drew Locke and Sam Darnold than Justin Fields. And he's like, what's the highest he could command? We'll, we'll be kind and we'll say a second round pick, probably a third round pick. And you're sitting there and you've been blessed by the football gods with the number one over selection to be able to pick the consensus, not just like on some people's boards or whatever. Maybe Nate Tice will say Drake may, but the consensus number one quarterback in Caleb Williams yeah. on a rookie contract. I just, I, I find it hard time to believe. Like it's, I know we've got 40 plus days before the first round of the draft yeah. and we've got to, you know, keep things interesting, but it nothing's changed as far as Caleb Williams going one, one. I mean, there are people that would like their fans. I mean, I'm not sure GMs, but there are, fans of teams that have like you know are really dying for a quarterback that would you know consider trading like five first round picks for that number one pick for yeah. a chance to get Caleb Williams because they think of him as that sure of a thing and meanwhile like you said Justin Fields with a very like you know like uh fair assessment of what their trade value would be you could get max a second round pick like right. that's that's just it would be so insane and such a misuse of resources to do that especially considering the Bears were the ninth pick in reality, not the first pick. Like right. This is not – they weren't the worst team in the league bad last year. So, like, there's no indications that they will be next year necessarily because they were a young team that was getting better. Uh, I just – I don't – it would be – they're going to end up with the 14th pick next year and they'll be even further away from drafting <laughs> – a better quarterback replacement if they don't do it this year. It's, it, it's Caleb Williams. It's like, nonsense. It's Caleb yeah. Williams. It's yeah. nonsense. He cried in the stands, Shane. <laughs> what a what a take him off the board. He's not a man. <laughs> That's not what a man does. He paints his fingernails. Oh man. Uh Sam went digital, 499 super chat. I don't like the idea of Ritter in the tush push. Reason why we beat them last year. Um not not bad. Like I know, yeah, Ritter on I think on a fourth down. He just couldn't get. He couldn't convert. Uh, I don't remember if Arthur Smith lined them up to to do a quarterback sneak. It was a disaster, though. It it's, was. It's hard to blame them against that vaunted Cardinals defensive front. Uh, the defensive line was ferocious. They were vaunted. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's it's something to get learn. Get ready to learn and tush push Desmond because <laughs> yeah, they're not going to sure. put Kyler in that situation. Pick and spreads. Our guy Donnie one ninety nine super chat still thinks Sweat Reddick are options for us. Um, not with those tampering tamperers in Philadelphia. Uh, you know, I'm sure they're trying to, you know, get the edge on everybody as far as every deal. But I don't know if, if Monty Ossifort wants to deal with those narcs that are the Philadelphia Eagles and trying to get them for a tampering and then turn around and, and make a deal for Sweater Reddick and, and kind of take those guys off their hands. It's Big Dom that's calling the league office. <laughs> Big Dom's like, hey. Roger. Do you think when Howie this makes calls and Dom is on another line listening yeah. and making sure there's no, no shenanigans? No, he's, no, he's because he's not allowed in the actual facilities. He's just he has he has a cup to the wall. Yeah. And he's listening like that. I would almost guarantee Big Dom and Roger have spoken on the phone before. I bet you they have. I they've tried to make this guy into that big of a deal. Roger Goodell's probably like, look, you overblown mascot. <laughs> Stay keep your hands off. Of our players making millions of dollars. Yeah, I, I just, I, I don't know, man. I just I, know it's big that Dom. when it's Howie makes a call, you just hear just heavy breathing in the background. The other GM's like, "Are you okay?" He's like, "Oh, sorry, that's Big Dom. He listens to all my calls. <laughs> make sure that nothing's going awry." Could the on Eagles this end. like? How do they keep continually get more and more unlikable? Though that's my question for them because. Like I had before this year, I really had no hate in my heart for the Eagles. But after this season, like they were the one team I was like, I really hope they don't win they, the Super Bowl. They, they signed CJ Gardner Johnson again, so they did. He pisses people off. Yeah, dude, dude it's just like he his, his ski mask. Yeah, well, I love that actually. You're gonna, but <laughs> you're gonna cry hard. when because of the, what the Cardinals did last year. You're gonna make a huge stink about it, and then you come into this off season and you go to the your division rivals' best player and you do the same thing. Yeah. and. and then your Eagles fans, of course, oh, this isn't the same. Yeah, everybody does it. It's like Monty Osifor called Jonathan Gannon and was like, hey, man, you interested in the gig? You want to interview after Super Bowl? Yeah, it sounds good to me. Cool, man. Talk to you then. That's what the third round That's heck. it, yeah. You ruined lives. You ruined <laughs> lives. We should have had Vic Fangio a year earlier. Yeah. Continue with the Super Chats. Let's throw them up there. 
Uh, we just talked to our guy picking spreads. Deuce, Dorch is the ankle breaker. LOL, he's going to ball. I, I, I agree. I think Greg Dorch, for the first time in his career, is going to get the true opportunity that he's carved out for himself, self-made in this league. Um, and, you know, I, I think, yeah, I'm not expecting like crazy numbers. I'm not saying like he's going to approach like 800 yards, but I think he could be easily a 500 yard receiver for this team and continue to make plays in the special teams. And that's all you need. Like, I, I, I hope, I genuinely hope for the sake of the Cardinals, like they continue, they upgrade the wide receiver position and we'll see like what, what their moves are with just three guys on their contract and a couple guys on futures deals. But it, it seems like that's probably going to be a position that they address in the draft. Dorch seems like the type of guy when he cuts, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that uh, Johnny's dream of getting two receivers in the draft yeah. is a little bit more alive? No, now? I think it's like, very much are, alive. Is Johnny right again? And, and, and you're just I mean, this is kind of getting embarrassing at this point. Though. Mm, you're fired. <laughs> Chase, five dollar super chat. I think it's one of the reasons they signed DJ Dallas. We're talking about Dorcher. Dorch won't be returning kicks next year. He'll be busy with the ones. Great show, fellas. Thank you so much, Chase. Appreciate you, my man. Love that profile pic. That's uh, where we have our drop a like comment because with Johnny thumbs up with Jonathan Gannon. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and DJ Dallas is a guy, we, we talked about the mentality that you have to have today about being a special teamer and you just have to embrace it. You like You have to go all into it. He's a guy for the Seahawks who um, was in the top five in kick return yardage. I think that there's a possibility that Dorch remains in punt returns. Shane, the DJ, was he a punt returner at all in Seattle? Yeah. Quite a bit? Yeah, punt okay. return and, and special teams. So full-time way. return guy. Uh, maybe they split or maybe it's just like, hey, this is DJ Dallas's job and, and Dorch, you just focus on uh, carving up defensive secondaries going forward. Yeah, I mean, Dorch was so good at returning last year. I know he didn't break one, but like, it always felt like every single time he got more than what his blocking gave him. Yeah. In my opinion, like it always, he never went down at the first man. Uh, and uh, that's, I mean, you, that's all you can ask for in a returner. Uh, Chase here in the chat with uh, MHJ and Brian Thomas Jr., baby. If you throw back to his mock draft, and <laughs> now, he took saying, both of them. I'm and, not saying in, in the first <laughs> round. I, I don't, I don't want to get that crazy and go first round wide receivers at four and 27. I like Ricky Pierce all a lot though. Pearsall is really rock solid. Are you shaking your head, former Sun Devil? You former, don't like him? No, I love him. He's, he, okay. he's, he is solid. He's, he's the, so he's, good. He's the, probably the drippiest white boy in the draft. He is kind of... No, I think he might be the drippiest white boy in the draft. I'm yeah, Lad's pretty drippy too, though. But I Well, but Lad's drippy in a silly way. <laughs> His name is Lad McConkey, dude. Did you yeah. see, by the way, did you see your boy Jody Ayler's tweet about Lad's Lads this morning? No. Yeah. He was like, we're still accepting applications. I said, brother, Jody. Yeah, I met you at the Super Bowl. You see, you know, seems like a great guy. Heard nothing but great things, but that that has been closed for yeah. a long time. You were, you were the founding father. Yeah, we, we closed life. that in Mobile. There's, <laughs> there's there was no applications we were accepting to lads lads after that. So we're looking at upgrades for the wide receiver room. Uh, we just had a deal go down with Curtis Samuel going to the Buffalo Bills, three years, thirty million. And it's great for Greg Dorch to have an expanded role. We're going to have to find somebody out there. They're, they're going to have to add one or two guys, even if they do draft a pair of receivers in, in, in April. What, what was the, you think that they're going to have to sign someone as well? I think they'll have to get at least one guy in the door. Yeah. I mean, I think you just can't rely on having to draft two receivers. You need to fill that need a little bit more beforehand, you know, going into the draft. I, the, ideally, you want to be able to pick best player available at every position because your team has no needs going into the draft. So yeah, having two needs at receiver would probably be pretty uh, counterproductive. I think, you know, you assume you're probably going to get Marv. I'm sure in league circles, they feel pretty confident about that if that's what's truly going to happen. And uh, uh, I mean, let me throw a couple names at all you guys. Hunter Renfro. I yeah. think he's kind of washed. He, yeah, but he also definitely goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like Hunter he's Renfro. A so guy. Guy. He's 28, isn't he? Yeah. 28. Um, we still have. I thought Tyler Boyd. He's still available. Mm -hmm. He's he's twenty nine. Probably little, gonna be thirty. Little Jordan Humphrey. Anybody? He's <laughs> he just resigned with the Stop. Broncos. Rats. Yeah. Uh, DJ Shark. DJ Shark. Doo -doo 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 -doo. How about Cedric Wilson, former Cowboys, Dolphins? Not 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 that great. Not great. You got a nice um, head. Nice shiny head. What about Paris Campbell? Uh, I don't think he did much for the Giants last year. What about uh, Braxton Berrios? 
kind of got a he's hot more if, if he's not gonna reti- yeah 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 sure if, if that's what you're going for tiktok followers but, richie uh, james anybody richie james who played with the chiefs at the end of last uh-huh. year right i my favorite bet on the super bowl was his under receiving yards of four and a half and it hit yeah it i like awesome. this from rafa Isaiah Hodgins, who the Giants mm, didn't tender. Sure. I like his size. I sure. love Isaiah Hodgins. I think that's maybe the profile of a, of a wide receiver that the Cardinals could could uh, could tie. That's an elite wide receiver right there. Isaiah Hodgins? Yep, he's elite. Elite talent. All right. Okay. I wasn't going to go that far. but <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. That's pretty good. If if it, if he taps into that eliteness that Shane. <laughs> LaVisca Chenault, anyone? Is he? He's not with the Carolina didn't keep him? No. Did you? Uh, I loved him coming out of Colorado. Same. He was insane. Yeah. He was a nutso. But he's kind of like Rondell Moore, right? I mean, bigger, obviously, but they envision him like kind of doing all these things, and then they yeah. just didn't have it defined. Yeah, but he did. He did everything. What about in Colorado? What about KJ Osborne? Yeah. Is he not KJ Osborne the, spoken for? The Twenty six years old. Spoken for. I feel like it's the, the price might be too steep for. Is him. he not going steady with anybody right now? I think like twelve million a year, ten million a year. Yeah, is that not too steep? I mean that's kind of what receivers these days are going. I know, for. but for the like uh, for 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 the Cardinals spot they're trying to fill, it's not a it's not a, th- a two or three. It's a four. Yeah, I, I mean no, it's five. It, how deep they want to go there, but that's that's you know someone that's like you don't want to be paying good. your fourth or fifth receiver twelve million dollars a year. Okay, dude, I'm sorry. It's fine. God, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan asking about Noah Brown. Rafa answering him in the chat. Leaves Noah Brown went back to Houston. Um, yeah, I mean there, there's plenty of guys to to fill out. A receiver room, no doubt about it. Uh, Trent Irwin action. Mm. I think he was okay last year for the Bengals. Nah. Stepping into a little bit of a bigger role. I think I'll pass on that. <laughs> okay, sounds good. But then you look at the draft <laughs> and, and you start talking about it, and I won't, I'm not going to get nuts and go, you know, fourth and 27, right? I'm going to go maybe fourth overall, Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm hmm. Our Twitter darling continues to like pro Cardinals tweets, mm-hmm. and then maybe one of the three thirds. I think I think that's absolutely the one of the what you you target that second receiver with. I mean, you have an abundance of resources there. Uh, it's a deep receiver draft. If you feel confident in a guy that you think he can, you know, be a rotational piece that can contribute for you in that third round, like it. I don't think he will be. I think he's gonna be a second rounder. But if there's a, like a guy like Ricky Pierce all available, I mm-hmm. think that that's exactly where you would you would take him with one of those three third rounders. Let's take a look at some of these uh, these wide receivers that could be there for the Cardinals um, in that spot. Sure. So Roman Wilson's probably the first guy that, that could fall because I, I think you're getting out of Donnie Mitchell, Troy Franklin, Lads, Lads, McConkey, mm-hmm. uh, and, and you're looking at Roman, Ricky Pearsall, uh, Jermaine Burton, who had a, had a decent combine, Keon Coleman, at Florida State, kind of a specimen, right? Kind of a freak. Jalen Polk from Washington. Xavier Leggett. Xavier Leggett out here to make plays for J- Jalen Polk is that guy. Dude, that, yeah. I watched it again because I just couldn't believe it. And is like, that, there's that, no way that that was real, but yeah. we talked to him in Mobile. He didn't sound like that. What is he? What is happening? I don't know. Someone was like, we need to get him and Patrick Mahomes on the same team <laughs> and just like get him on a podcast together. <laughs> Tez Walker out of Carolina. I'm going to take Johnny Wilson off the board. I just don't know know. his six, seven frame if he can get enough separation. Jamari Thrash. I think we're now you're talking my language. What about Corley? I like Malachi Corley. Okay, at a he's a hilltopper, and then people (laughs) are he is calling for uh, Brennan Rice, who is confirmed. Wait, Western Kentucky? Yeah, Yeah. give me him. Get Bailey Zappi on this roster. Five eleven, separation, (laughs) two ten, separation. How about Jacob Cowing? He had a decent pro day today down there in Tucson. He's not that good. People, okay. people always want to. They want to <laughs> just say. I know it's easy connecting the dots. They're like, "Hey, there's that's the next Tank Dell." I think. I think Jacob which Cohen's, is easier said than. I think he's a little small for what the Cardinals should be targeting. I, it, right? We can agree on that. Like he's like five, this five eleven is not right. He's right? not five yeah, eleven. He's, he's more like five foot eight. And and like that's kind of what we were just talking about. You, they're probably realized they had too many of those guys last year. I doubt that they that would be what they would be going after. Yeah. In a profile. Brennan Rice, uh, I think he would be solid. I think he plays a similar role or would at the pro level as, as Michael Wilson. But um look, I, I don't I don't know if you could go wrong with a guy like Brennan Rice. They're they're obviously interested. They're bringing him in. He's pretty good. Yeah. And I think he showed that it can be a little bit more physical than people anticipated coming out of at a USC. 
looks like we're kind of done here on this list. Yeah, we? this is then you're getting down in the weeds. <laughs> I'm looking at these names and they're just they're they're no one's moving me. No. Uh, but yeah, I think that third round sweet spot, it, like if Xavier Leggett was there, like that wouldn't be a bad, that wouldn't, I, I think that that would be a great uh, use of resources, you know, like that's a high upside type of pick. Yeah. I, who knows if he might flame out and not be that great, but I feel like he has extremely like, like a ceiling that could be fantastic. Lou T, Western Kentucky's elite in the mascot mashup. Is that the old 2014 NCAA? Is that yeah. where you could play as the uh, mascots? Aaron. And Arizona Animal coming to the defense of uh, former Wildcat Jacob Cowing. Cowing's a stud. Cowing's elite. Mikey Desert Cardinal. I don't think the 49ers are going to reach uh, reach for anyone. They have plenty of talent. Oh, is that going back to some some debate in the chat? That's fine. We'll move on. Um, and then Xavier Worthy, the guy who set the record. I'm done. For- I'm out. You don't like him. I, I think that the second someone breaks a record like that, their value shoots way higher than it should. I'm 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 out on a guy like that. Like that's what happened to John Ross. He's a second round pick, became like a first rounder, like borderline top ten, right? And then flamed out. Like that's keep me away. I'd I'd rather have Adonai Mitchell to be completely honest with you. The, the reason you can start looking at those those wide receivers again, um, around the third round. I mean, they, they help themselves out. I'll tell you what it is, but I got to tell you about our friends over at some boroughs. Uh, I was for long when I found out my son went with my father-in-law, his grandpa to some boroughs without me. Uh, cause I love to get that delicious, most beloved Mexican food in all of Arizona. Love some boroughs like to get there. I mix it up. I like to get some of the folded tacos, the tostadas today. They've got their green chili, uh, on discount today. You can save some money while you're getting some of their green chili beef. It's unbelievable. It's fire. You can check it out. You can get 20% off while you're doing so for the entire month of March. Some boroughs is family owned and operated. And it's of course, Arizona's most beloved Mexican restaurant. Check it out. You can get 20% off your order up to a hundred bucks. When you use code PHNX at checkout for the whole month of March available in restaurant restaurant also through drive through and when you order online there's no third party here you got to do it online at sunburrows.com if you want to get it to go uh and then you just sneak through the drive through you can it doesn't limit you to getting booze like margaritas they're gonna hook you up with some margaritas they just you know put a little tape over top of it they make you street legal and you're taking it home you got margs at home which is elite yeah i love some burrows and uh also uh i know you're looking forward to some burrows all the time your once a week stop you make there mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to our draft party at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. That's going to be yeah. – I that, can't wait. Dude, Wild Horse Pass is the best place ever. It is. Like the craps tables ever. they have with the with the Cardinals, with the Coyotes, with the Diamondbacks. Like it just makes you feel that much more alive. And their Better MGM <laughs> Sportsbook, it's amazing. Like that place is like – I could speak about it for days – you, I mean, listen, Shane, you love Vegas. Like, Ve- yeah. you call that your city. Yeah. But like, well, it is my city. I but, don't call but, it that. But you can get everything you need at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. More. Yeah, and more. The vibes are better. They are, And it smells way, better. Way be- and the people are better. The vibes? Yeah. Better. I mean, that's what Gila River Resorts and Casinos are all about. Make sure you guys join us at Wild Horse Pass for that draft party. When, when's the date on that, though? April 25th. April 25th. Uh, it's I believe it's $35. That's uh, right. So, and food and drink is included. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a ton Say of fun out there. Uh, so 35 bucks gets you in the door mm-hmm. and then it gets you food and drink. And you get to hang out with Johnny Venerable. That's right. Yeah. JV. That's, that's, he's going to be there. We're going to crowd surf. He's going to turn into James. That <laughs> night. We, when Marv gets picked, we are crowd surfing Johnny. That is a fact. A hundred percent. Yeah. That is 100 percent. I think he'll be in on that too. We should, we should strap a GoPro to his head <laughs> and just see what happens, what Johnny does. It, it's going to be so electric. You're going to be bummed if you see it. It's uh, no doubt about it. Inevitably on social media, you're going to say, I, I missed out on that. I could have been there. Gila River yeah. Resort and Casinos where they take uh, the next level to the next level. Much like Larry, people are going to be asking you, where were you when the Cardinals made that pick? Mm-hmm. And and you're going to be able to say, I watched it with all of my bestest friends in the entire world. I had my hand on JV's lower back. <laughs> yeah. Supporting yeah. Him you were the touch pushing him across. The, you were crowd <laughs> surfing him and touch yeah. pushing Johnny Venerable. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, no one does it better than Gila River Resorts no. and casinos. Uh, they offer an authentic and immersive experience with an unprecedented level of entertainment and excitement. Uh, all kinds of restaurants. They got the big sports book that Shane met- mentioned. Uh, they got a Shula Steakhouse. Yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty. It's that's fine pretty dining. elite there. But uh, then you don't have to do fine dining there too. You could just walk up and to the sure. other spots. You could hang you out some the food pool. to go. 
yeah. cabana at the pool. I mean, it's it's it, everything's elite at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. So head on over to Gila and let them show you what Next Level is all about. April 25th, Jessica, same vibes, our immaculate jewels, Sam. My wife and I got a hotel there so we can stay there and have a good time and night with y'all. Never been there. So damn excited. Can't wait to see y'all there. Let's Absolutely. go. Yeah, that is it. what I'm talking about. I was looking to get a hotel room there too. I think I'm going to try because that their rooms are awesome too. And if you can just walk up to your hotel room yeah, after, a, after a, a long night day, of, a night of JV lifting and, <laughs> and, and, and beer drinking, like there's, there's nothing better than that. My back's going to be sore from carrying Johnny on my shoulders all night. Yeah. You're going to watch, you're going to watch Marvin Harrison Jr. Become a Cardinal and then them continue to just put on a master class. Monty is in the first round, come away with two starters. The future of the Arizona Cardinals will be at that point now. Yeah. And then you're going to say, you know what? I'm tuckered out from all this mm-hmm. excitement. Time to call it a night and just head upstairs. Yeah. You just go to the elevator and you put in whatever floor level you're at. Uh, I also can't com- completely confirm this, but there's a very high likelihood that you're going to have a video of JV drinking a beer. And that's always a great video to have. Oh, because yeah. We yeah. Don't yeah. Have we'll get him to chug one for Marvin. No, yeah. he can't. <laughs> he'll, he'll try he's just not he's not physically capable of chugging a beer it was it was something i don't know if he had an accident when he was a child um but he's just he has a, he has a drinking problem <laughs> he, he can't he just, drink he can't drink properly yeah he can't drink pop properly he, he's two-handed it before it's just it's it's a bad look it's a bad look for for anybody skylar you guys seeing the news about dak uh We've seen that. We're not, I have no. I haven't done enough research to have an opinion on it. Um, Lou T, this has been a great episode of the Johnny Fremble Show. It certainly has. Uh, Craig saying toss JV until pick twenty seven. It's it's quite possible. I mean, that's a lot of endurance to go from four down to twenty seven. Uh, Lou saying over under how far Shane can toss JV. What do you think? Uh, if it's just flat land, yeah, I would say I could probably throw him a good seven feet. So that that'd be from where you're sitting right now to me and Damon. Yeah, that's a good toss. Yeah, that's a good toss. Well, it, but but if I have like if I have like a running start, I would say ten. Which so is pretty. You're gonna far. crow hop throw JV. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like get, get him in a tight spiral. <laughs> oh, Jessica, will will he be able to finish his beer laughing emoji? Oh, man. Yeah. Mikey Desert Cardinal. This team has a bright future with Monty Austin Ford as their GM and Jonathan the Cannon Gannon as our head coach. Super excited. So you made it to the part of the show where we're going to get into the newest Cardinals. I was fortunate enough to go out there to Tempe today, uh, ask some questions to all new six Cardinals. uh, Started out there. I think it was Sean Murphy Bunting was the first guy. Their, Their new outside corner. And man, was he impressive. Uh, And then talked to DJ Dallas. Mac Wilson, and then the two defensive linemen. Jonah Williams was also out there. I mean, we're like less than 12 hours off of him becoming a Cardinal. You're forgetting all the big signings they've made. There's just been, there's too many. I think I got them all. <laughs> I, I think know, I got them in. You almost forgot Jonah I, Williams. I did. I almost forgot about big Jonah Williams, but he's going to look ex- like him and Yell and Foldholt, like when they get off the bus, I guess, I don't know if teams really do that and you witness it any longer, but when they're in the bowels of the opposing team's stadium and they get off the bus, it's going to be like you're being invaded by Vikings. Like, yeah. And that's a good thing if you're an offensive lineman. You, if it looks like you are Vikings ready to raid a village, yeah, I think that's a that's a good look for an offensive lineman. It's menacing. And then there's Will Hernandez. Yeah, Will, yeah, Will Hernandez, Yell <laughs> and Foldholt. Paris Johnson, potentially whoever they draft. Desmond Ritter. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a big get off the bus guy. Yeah, yeah, Come for on. sure. Uh, I mean, Will Hernandez doesn't have a knack. No, he doesn't. Like he is just one singular rectangle uh, all the way around. That's pretty intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to mess with a, a rec- guy like a that. A rectangle body mass. Are you talking about dude. like a square? I, dude, it's like because I would say legitimately, like his head is like the same width as like his <laughs> as his shoulders. It's in- unbelievable. <laughs> He's a box man. He's he's pretty impressive physically. Uh, let's take a look. So, what do we have here for clips, Shane? You, I, I know we have Jonah Williams. We have, we have Jonah, Sean Murphy Bunting, and Matt Wilson. Let's hear from Jonah Williams. Jonah Williams was asked as far as what position he's going to play because everybody wants to know: is he going to play left tackle? Is he going to play right tackle? He was asked about his position change from left to right tackle last year in Cincinnati. I think, you know, I, I wanted to approach that situation positively and, you know, that, that's what I did was, 
you know, let's just let's do the best that I can wherever I am. And that was at right tackle last year. And, um, you know, I think it worked out for, well for me. I enjoyed playing right tackle and I think I had a good year. And I think that versatility is, is nothing but positives for me, um, you know, in my career and what I can bring to the team. You mentioned that. Well, there you go. Uh, Jonah Williams basically saying, you know, he, he wanted to do it. He understands the, the, the value of versatility. It didn't sound like he wanted to go from left tackle to right tackle. I, I'm, I, that's me listening to his answer. Uh, and that, that I'm, I'm sure it, it feels like any tackle in this league, um, if, if you ask them, they want to play on that left side. They want to have the distinction of franchise, you know, uh, blindside protector. Yeah, I think so. Unless, unless for some reason you're you feel a lot more comfortable on like this side of your hips, you know, mm. from your pass set going to the right side rather than the left side. But I don't yeah. know. I mean, I'm not no lineman, so I have right. no idea. You do how. have dancers' hips, though. I do have dancers. Shane was showing me his get off yesterday. It's really good. <laughs> really good off. If, this if we get 300 likes on this video before it ends, okay, I'll, I'll show everybody how fast I can get off the offensive line. You guys, it's you will not want to miss ridiculous. that. It's impressive. Do you need any more incentive than yeah. to see that? Hit that like <laughs> need, button. need to like the video. Mm -hmm. But so, I, I don't know. When I'm seeing that and I look at the career snaps of Jonah Williams, over 2,000 snaps on the left side and then just over 1,000. It was a full season last year. Um, you know, playing right at a necessity because they, they make the acquisition of Orlando Brown in free agency. I, I think that he's a guy, and I, and I thought Walter Mitchell, he pointed this out on Twitter, uh, and I thought it was a good point. I agree with it. That I'm sure there was probably some sort of conversation from his representatives that he wants to play left tackle. I think that had to be a conversation they had before he puts you know ink to paper, right? right? Like he wants to know his role. Any athlete would. Like when you're signing a contract, especially one that's that big, two years, $30 million, I would assume that he had to have asked, do you plan on having me on the left or right side? Because I'm sure in conversations with other teams, it was kind of up in the air whether which side of the line they wanted him to play on. So yeah. I'm certain they had to have talked to, to him about it. Much like a lot of stuff with this regime, uh, I'm pretty sure they'll probably keep it pretty tight-lipped until you're out there watching some some drills or something yeah. in training camp. Like that seems to be kind of the MO with the – the Gannon uh, crew. I don't. I don't want to say shocked. I think shock is the wrong word. Maybe surprised if if they put Joan on the right tackle and, and then switched Paris Johnson Jr. over to left tackle, which he did finish his college career at. But just from what the early inklings of this organization, they wanted to keep that continuity, continue off of Paris Johnson's Jr.'s first season, where he went, where he played every snap of of each and every game at right tackle and that there's also what Lane Johnson has done in the career he's had in Philadelphia and you know, where J Jonathan Gannon just came from. Also, when you see people talking about Will Hernandez in the chat and joking about, you know, as he built like SpongeBob, <laughs> um, that they were, they had a great tag team duo thing going on yeah. on that right side. Like unless you're, you have uh, an immense amount of conviction that, Paris Johnson Jr. is going to be your starting left tackle from here on full forward. You know, I, I think that I, I don't think it hurts you to keep Paris Johnson Jr. I think that you honestly just want to move forward like that. I think that that's something that uh, is undervalued too when we talk about alignment. I think a lot of people just look for like who's the best player overall and just plug and play. But chemistry mm -hmm. is such an important piece of those five guys across the line. Like they got to be communicating. Uh, I hear a lot of people say like outside of quarterback that intellectually that's the most difficult position on the football field uh you know having to read uh you know the pass rush sets that uh you know pre-snap and all that uh so i i think if you know with with will and paris they they clearly seem to have pretty good chemistry communicate well together um they're like you like you mentioned there really is no point in screwing that up potentially yeah. when you you know you're gonna have a new left guard and new left tackle maybe you can build that sort of like cohesiveness with with those two new guys while keeping that continuity on the yeah. right side. Just thought about this with Rondell Moore exiting it gives kind of an elite number available. Number 4. Mm. How do we feel about that maybe for the fourth overall pick? No. no. 4 is such a bad number. It's not a receiver number. It's just a bad number. You think so? 4 is a terrible number. I think it's pretty I think I think it looks good with the Cardinals uniforms. Name a good number 4. Seriously, name somebody who was good at anything that wore number four. 
Sorry, Ron Elmore, you were solid, but like, yeah. Man, I'm I'm hard pressed. Yeah. Chat. Why can't I think of? Because they nobody wears number four because it's ugly. Kevin Cobb. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> um, that's a damn good question. I'm gonna. That's gonna eat me up. It's gonna eat me alive. That is kind of crazy. Chris Bosh, bro. Brett Favre. Favre. Mm. Favre's good. Barkley? Chase had that. When did Barkley wear four? Uh, p- probably the Rockets. Okay. Derek Carr. <laughs> the DC is the second player NFL.com has given me for number four. Dak is four. Deshaun Watson. <laughs> it's mostly quarterbacks. Vinatieri. Now we're in the yeah. kicker realm. See? Gross. Archie? What? Bad number. Archie Manning? Yeah, what's it's the most not the elite, What's the most elite football number? Most elite football number. So normally I would just say overall seven, but I don't like how seven I looks like on 19. a football jersey. You disgust me. I think 18 is <laughs> kind of elite because of Peyton Manning and a lot of really good receivers. 19, 33, 99. Those are three really good ones. You haven't had single-digit receivers uh, long enough. Like I think I think four could could be fine. Um, Fabregas. Oh yeah, so excuse me. Good excuse shot, me. Merrick. Yeah, the, the the Barcelona legend. Uh, Chris Chel- Webber. Chelsea no, legend. that's right. I know. Nick Nicholas jumping in with C Web. That's a good four. Um, MP saying looking like Fields may stay with the Bears. Lou mm-hmm. Gehrig, yeah. Lou Gehrig is probably the goat for. Yeah, because like that was like I can you know, say myself. You self, for. self, self. <laughs> Stop. Ritter was, yeah, he's he, he the luckiest be, man, man, man. They might just swap out the nameplate for Ritter to get in the four. world, world, world. world. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that stopped me in, our, in my tracks. Uh, we were talking about, um, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get to the important stuff on yeah. the show. We were talking about the, the potential of, of Paris Johnson Jr. staying at right tackle and Jonah Williams. Now, after Jonah spoke, it was Sean Murphy bunting, and Sean Murphy bunting, it really had it. When I was asking him, you know, has he talked to the team about scheme? And what did he like most now that, you know, the free agency kind of whirlwind last couple of days is in his rearview mirror? What's he most excited about? And this was his answer, uh, Sean Murphy bunting, uh, about what he's looking forward to with this Cardinals organization. Yeah, uh, playing football first and foremost, right? Um, that's just one thing you don't really have to think about, right? Um, but yeah, scheme and everything, just being able, when I was upstairs um, talking to the coaches and everything and, and, and going over what they you know, expect from me and what they see in me, it's like, um, it's really just, it's, it's crazy, you know, because like I said, you go through so many different opportunities and, and so many different places. And I've only been to two places, so I'm, I'm not speaking on being a guy that's been bouncing around, but um, you know, they see something in me that I see in myself. Right, and it's like it adds up. It, it it resonates with me so well because everything that they preach and everything that they value, I have and that I do. Um, and so I'm looking forward to just being a piece that they can use and and utilize in every way and and really help me reach my ceiling because that's the ultimate goal. And I love what he said, and I think that's what really makes Monty Awesome for and Jonathan Gannon special. Uh, and, and it's the the direct quote there from Sean Murphy Bunting saying. They see in me what I see in myself and that he was, I think, kind of taken off guard by that because he went from being a Super Bowl champion with the Bucks to having to prove himself last year with the Tennessee Titans to having an OK season with Tennessee to an Arizona Cardinals team that made him their first like, signing of year two of their rebuild. Because Monty Osfort is a sicko and he's in there. And he's, he's looking at tape each and every waking hour of his day and figuring out what, like who's the best scheme fit for what Jonathan Gannon's doing. It's not who's the biggest name. It's who's the best fit. And for him and for them to kind of bring in a guy like Sean Murphy Bunting and empower him as early as they have and him to, that's kind of already resonate in him, I think that's a special quality. And I think, uh, like, I mean, we were talking when we talked to Gannon at the combine. Like, he he mentioned that you just have to like talk to these players. You have to connect with them on like a, a personal basis. And I I think that this just kind of proves that, right? Like, he says that they see in me what I see in myself. Mm-hmm. Like, it it feels to me like 
Monty Austin Fort, Jonathan Gannon, Nick Rawls, they're in a room with him and they're ta- they're telling him what role they think he's going to be yeah. in and they're just they're just being honest with him. They're talking to him like like people not like an authority figure or something like right. that and I, I think that goes a long way in especially in a free agent process like this where you're looking to sign somewhere and you're like this is these are people I would want to play for. These are these are, you know, this is a coach and a GM that that uh like I'm proud to to, you know, you know, be a part of like, but I, the, this organization. But I also think there's substance to it because I, I'm sure at the high school ranks, the college ranks, and in, in, especially in the pros, you know, there there are people in power positions that are going to tell you what you want to hear to to get the deal done, right? And, and to continue to keep players happy, which is tough this day and age. Yeah. But I think with guys, especially guys who have chips on their shoulder, who have an underdog mentality, and I get you can kind of get that sense but also have the confidence that they can play with anybody in the world and then them to be able to relate to those guys and then tell them like, this is the role we have for you. This is what we envision. Like we, we see you as a CB one. He's like, you know what? I see myself as a CB one and this is how we're going to make you the best version of yourself. And this is how you're going to dominate on the outside for us. This, I think this is going to go down as like one of the most slept on signings of the off season. Yeah. I think like I could see, Talking heads four weeks in being like, this is, this was such a great sign. And right. we didn't talk about it enough because he, he really has that, that ability to be a top 10, maybe even five corner in the I, starting corner in the NFL. He but was his so pro good on football that focus number was mid chain. He was, can't possibly be good. It was pretty good, actually, wasn't it? Wasn't it one of the better um, ones, or was that was am I, I think misremembering? It was probably that? In the fifties or sixties. Uh, I mean, I just like that he was elite on that Super Bowl run. So we've seen him play. At, we've seen him play at that at that level before. And also, don't you think Tennessee is just a little bit of a dumpster fire? He, well, he did. I did appreciate that he gave credit to uh, Mike Vrabel. I think he has a lot of respect for for Vrabel. But everything else around that organization mm-hmm. seems like it's just uh, a portageon on fire. 50, 57 grade last last season. Season before that, seventy six points. Yeah. Sucks. Also, compound names are always good. Like if you have if you have a split last name, you're elite. It's a good football name, Sean sure. Murphy Bunting. Yeah, it's it really is. Did you see? I think it was. I gotta give credit where it's due. Luke Lipinski um, tweeted out, and he had one video of Sean Murphy, catcher for the Braves. <laughs> swinging he said this is sean murphy swinging and then this is a picture of sean murphy bunting that's really good that's, that's, that's really, really good, good. Can, I, can i read this out loud in my yeah. voice uh-huh with the number four pick in the 2024 <laughs> nfl draft the arizona cardinals select johnny scootin venerable <laughs> scat back yeah scat back out of the university of cincinnati <laughs> Panera Brad. don't do that to him he's a proud tuna proud fish illinois state <laughs> alum <laughs> Do you think Johnny would just go to Illinois State football games and just say that those guys are nobodies and that they'll never? Yeah, but but like under his breath. No, I think <laughs> I think that like out there watching, he's like he the best player. He'd be like, "That's a legit player. We need the Cardinals to get him." Yeah. But then like behind closed doors, he'd be like, "That conference is a joke." <laughs> so good stuff there from uh, Sean Murphy Bunting, and we we've got Mac Wilson too. Mac Wilson. Is an absolute just delight. Like you saw his exploits on Twitter yesterday, and I asked him, like, because he's he's dead serious about obviously his profession and and serious about the game of football. Uh, but he he's I said you like to have funny on, on or you like to have fun on Twitter. And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And it was very genuine and wholesome what he said. He's like, fans out there, they want to communicate with us. They they want to use Twitter as a platform. They think they can just reach out to us. And talk with us. So I want to oblige that. I want to make because if somebody says something to me on Twitter or social media and I respond, it makes those people feel better that day. I'm like, that's cool, man. Like that's that's really cool. So he's going back and forth, and he'll continue to go back and forth with Cardinals fans and football fans out there on social media. But then he was asked, you know, about his versatility, a guy who can cover a little bit. He played off ball and then he was off the edge for the Patriots at the end of last year. Uh, but he was he was asked about Kazir White, somebody that he can potentially couple with as the Arizona Cardinals duo as far as middle linebackers, and this is what he had to say about Kazir. Dog. Nah, <laughs> Kazir White, he's he's a, he's a dog though. He he's I watched him, you know, last year before uh, he had this little injury or whatnot. Kind of remind me of myself, downhill thumper, can do it all, and you know, you put me with a guy like that is. <laughs> Tell me. No, we're gonna see. 
but now it's, it's, I'm excited. Like I said, as you can tell, I'm excited to be here, excited to get this thing started. You know, I got got three years here, so I'm going to try my best to, to leave a mark, get into the community, do whatever I can to, to be the best version of Matt Wilson. Is there is there higher compliment in this day and age game as a player? Somebody just goes, dog. I don't think so. I don't think because your white would rather have any sort of superlative <laughs> given. The so. only thing that could be better is if he just started barking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been good. What, what are your thoughts on Kazir White? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that would have been way better. But Mac Wilson like continued like he parlayed his Twitter performance yesterday to another winning performance at the podium today. We heard from the defensive lineman that you know that can't be overlooked because it's the position group that was most uh, necessary to upgrade this offseason. And you know they weren't they didn't get Christian Wilkins, but they got two guys that are starting caliber defensive linemen and Justin Jones, who got the biggest contract, three for thirty million plus. And then Bilal Nichols, who got uh, three for about 21. And I asked uh, Justin, and I'm just going to tell you what he said, like if he was excited about coming in with someone like Bilal and help taking that position group to a, a higher level. And he's like, dude, I've been with hanging out with Bilal Nichols since the <laughs> senior bowl. Like they've been boys wow. and they've just missed each other through being on you know the same team their entire careers. But they've been tight since Bilal Nichols was – a late addition to the Senior Bowl in Mobile, and he was a roommate with Justin Jones, and Justin Jones helped him on the fly learn the playbook for the Senior Book Senior Bowl, and they've been friends ever since. And he told a story about how you know Bilal Nichols, the report came out first about him signing with the Cardinals, and Jones called him, and he was like, "Hey man, we're getting together in the desert," and Bilal Nichols was like, "Word, like because." There was no report about Jones, and they're just pumped to play with each other. Uh, going back to that senior bowl thing, that sounds a lot like me and Lad McConkey this year. Yeah, out in Mobile, there just is kind of a kind of. I was like, gonna say that sounds a lot like me and you. We saw <laughs> each other at the senior bowl, and then we had to go do our other jobs. Yeah, sure. And now we're back. We're reunited in the desert. You're yeah, just, just just you're just just, just bros, <laughs> just wrecking wrecking shit at this level together, kind of as a tag team duo. I like that. Um, Evans, Michael Evans saying white is good. Yeah, absolutely. I think until he uh, went out with the injury last year, he was probably the most consistent defender. Um, That's a tough one, Bo. I probably wouldn't, I would probably would have avoided that one. What? White is good. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> we're getting a little, we're getting edgy on this show. Arizona Animal, we force him fumbles next season. I'd love to see it. Look, Jonathan Gannon wants defenders that are going to get their hands on football. They're going to, they're going to get their hands on interceptions. They're going to get their hands on on fumbles jesse jessica saying were the introductory pressers recorded i want to watch them all the the team might have them i mean if you look at phnx underscore cardinals in my twitter account at bob rock uh bob rack easiest way to phonetically put in there <laughs> um you can find a lot of clips from there a lot of highlights from there um but i'm sure the cardinals they've got it up on there maybe on their youtube page i'm not sure but um dj dj dallas heard from him he's like all in embracing the special teams role. Um, and did we miss anybody else? You think he's a captain? Special teams captain? Uh, I mean, the the dagger that Matt Prater fell on, I think he's always <laughs> for missing those two kicks. They say, they say uh, Matt, we're going to take away your, your C, but we're going to give you a statue in front of State Farm. <laughs> no, he better have his... He better <laughs> his have gold his... gold C on Yeah, it. that's yeah. right. Chase, let's 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 get it going. Chase, let's 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 take it up a notch here. Rafa, they're on YouTube, yes, so you can check them out. Yeah, they're all there. Highly encourage you watching. Um, don't leave our our page right now to watch it, but absolutely check them out. John, what's the temperature on Mike Williams? Uh, it's frigid. It's frigid. Uh, if it's Fahrenheit or Celsius, it's low. Um, I just don't think that that's somebody thirty years old probably gonna command a little bit of money, you know, relative to the position. Um, on the open market and you know we'll see he should be ready by training camp but I just don't think that's the direction they would go but could be wrong yeah I sure he's an ex receiver they need an ex receiver uh, I'm not I, I I don't really like Mike Williams all yeah, that much I, I mean I'm, I'm with you I mean he wasn't very available last year I actually you know what he's shockingly more available than I thought he was mm -hmm. like he I, he missed a lot of games his rookie year he missed a lot of games last year when did he play the most going uh, into a contract year 
in the three years in between, he played like 13, 14 games every year. But he was, if like, I feel like he feels a lot more hurt than that because he was banged up so much. Mm. In those seasons, he missed like three, four games, but it was like, you know, two injuries that were like hobbling him all season. So he feels like one of those like extremely injury prone guys. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not really a huge fan. And I think that, I bet you the money he's going to get is something that I wouldn't want to pay that guy. I love the back and forth between Needy and Deuce in the chat. They're just <laughs> we just have people howling at the moon for quick Clayton tune. They're just doing their Rudy tune, involved. Their tune war yeah. cries. Dana jumping in with actually uh release of DJ Humphreys means more money for a few more signings. Do you see any coming at the edge? Or elsewhere. Hope so. Looking at the edge, the edge market, uh, a couple more names went today. Um, it's it's times are tough out there. They're gonna have to be kind of under the radar. I think the edge, they're gonna look to maybe improve in the draft there. Uh Rudy getting in on the two. And this is unreal. This is like a this is a Rudy like any of these names excite you? Some edge rushers here. We got yeah. Emmanuel Ogba, Carl Lawson, Randy. How old's Ogba? Ogba is 30. Pass. Uh, uh Carl Lawson, uh Randy Pass. Gregory. Pass. Um Randy Gregory, does he does he love ball? I don't think he does. And Gawkway, we talked about yesterday. Chase Young, we talked a little bit about yesterday. Charles Harris, Derek Barnett. That one probably makes a little bit yeah, of sense. 27, there. right? Yeah. He's got an experience with JG. Reclamation project on uh Caleb on Chase on. <laughs> Is he still in the league? Yeah, I guess so. I had no idea. He's but, only 24. Yeah, he's a he's wow. just finished his rookie contract. Or I guess they probably declined the fifth year option, I'm assuming, on on him. Um yeah, not not the greatest group of all time available, but you could find a guy here or there, I'm sure. I want to answer that Mike Pfeiffer saying, uh, what is this I'm hearing the cards and Vikings are in talks for fourth overall pick? Now, I saw this today, and this is one of those stories, and we see it every free agency in probably draft season. Somebody hits the Twitter streets out of nowhere and they start breaking stories on Twitter. Um, and this is it pretty Ricky. Have you guys been paying attention to pretty Ricky? Mm-hmm. An account showed up. It was pre, it's under pretty Ricky, like two, three, one. And he broke like three signings before they actually went down before insiders, before rap sheet, before Pelissero, before Adam Schefter. And then yesterday there was such a uh, kind of, uh, like overwhelming response to Pretty Ricky being this this out of nowhere insider, his account basically crashed, and then he came back today and he started like spewing out more stuff. And one of his things that he had today, he, he claims he's a notary of sorts, uh, but he's got inside from information. He's saying that the Cardinals and the Vikings have had considerable talks. Now, I this is where he's losing me. A couple of the stuff that he was saying this morning. Never came to fruition, uh, and his run is over. His 15 minutes are officially done, uh, and I'm not going to put much stock in Pretty Ricky. Wouldn't it be? I've, li- I've had considerable talks with Bo about him giving me $100, but <laughs> I don't know if it's ever going to happen. It would be kind of lunacy if they didn't accept those calls when you think about it. Like, there's no guarantee. They have the fourth pick, not the first pick. Mm-hmm. They want Marv, hypothetically. Like, there's no guarantee he's on the board there. So you have to do your due diligence and right. be like, well, if he's not going to be there, then maybe we can trade down with this team in this spot. Right. Like, so that's not that doesn't feel like groundbreaking news that there. It's just like the reporter that was like the Cardinals. They would be a fit for um, Deontay Johnson just based on they needed receivers and they have draft capital. And some Steelers reporter was like, "Oh, that would make a whole lot of sense." And then he just put that out there on the Twitter, and then everybody's streets. like, "They want him." And then you've got probably pretty Ricky who's talking to people more on the Vikings side of things, right? Yeah. And they're saying if they want to get up, they'd have to get up to four. And, you know, the Cardinals need a lot of things still, but they they haven't considered that they're sitting in a prime spot to have a generational type talent fall into their lap. That doesn't necessarily happen because you've got three quarterbacks at the top that are worthy going one, two, three, and likely will. I just don't think, you know, Monty Osfort might pick up the phone, but like as far as considerable and like if Monty Osfort actually entertaining it, I think that that's a long shot. You just have to have a contingency plan. It's as simple as that. Like there's no, 
he would Monty would not be doing his job if he was just like, well, we got it, we got it figured out with the first one. Let's just move on and yeah. never talk about it the rest of the off season. Like, that's just not how that job works. No. So, uh, I mean, I, I I like to I actually like to hear that they've had some talks just so it you know looking back if say something catastrophic happens at least you know three first round picks from the Vikings out of it yeah. you know Rudy saying bull take we get Chase Young on a one year prove it deal. He's doing uh, his kind of tour, some couple facilities. I don't know what the latest on Chase Young. I mean, 24 years old, it's just going to come down to, you know, whether he's a character fit. Yeah, Obviously, does he love ball? Does he love ball? And that's, <laughs> they've got a pretty good, good, like hearing from, like everybody was impressive today of the six guys that he signed. Uh, and you couple that with the guys that they already have in the building that are impressive. Also, I didn't even mention this. Several of the players, the new Cardinals have talked to Kyler Murray because he was in there. He was in the lab. He was working out. He was just at the facility. Work. I don't know if he ever leaves the facility. It's kind of like Johnny. Just always in the lab. <laughs> Johnny at Curves in Chandler. <laughs> don't dox him. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kyler's probably in the in the rooms with all the scouts and everything, like giving free agent recommendations yeah. too. Not just draft. He's probably like, yeah, you want this guy. Oh, Justin Jones got a big sack on me against the Bears. He was no. a handful all game. <laughs> Like he's he's probably picking them out, you know. Yeah, legends never die. MHJ Wilson, Dorch McBride. Don't sleep on Elijah Higgins. Weapons for K one. Yeah, I don't think they're short on that, uh, especially with James Conner too in the background in the in the backfield. So, uh, Animal TV, are you Animal TV saying Young isn't a fit? No motor. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. It, I thought that he played had a lot higher motor when he was playing in San Francisco, but that's that's an easy place to kind of go fit in. With his skill set. Well, he kind of got challenged, right? After the NFC Championship game where, uh, wasn't it uh, Steve Wilkes that was like, yeah, he, he, you were not playing hard and he had to come out in the Super Bowl. He played pretty decent in the Super Bowl, but... Uh, he played I, really well in the Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah. So, I mean, if that's something they feel like they can coach a guy up and get him uh, more engaged on a down-to-down basis, I mean, he, he was in a terrible situation. He had Jack Del Rio as his DC in DC. I mean, that guy's not inspiring anybody. He got fired. He got sent packing half less than halfway through That's the season. Moving last you? Year. No, Jack. <laughs> no, he's not. Um, but uh let's see. No Bam F saying after trading Rondell, we need to bring back Hollywood to, or get Mike Williams. I'd be curious to see what the next step is for Hollywood Brown. Me too. Um, I feel like that's such a wild card in this free agency process. Mm -hmm. Like he really could go anywhere and I wouldn't like, it wouldn't surprise me Yeah, if they were just like, yeah, he's going to the Packers on a one year deal. Prediction. Name a team. Where's he going? Chiefs. Ooh, that's fun. The Chiefs willing to spend enough to get him though. I think, I think that he gives them a discount potentially to win a championship, look good for a year and then sign somewhere else. I feel like the Chiefs have been tied to so many different receivers, big names like OBJ. Ooh. Where does he fit in that offense with Cliff. John Dotson? And I, I know probably play Johan? his best ball under Cliff before he hurt his foot. Johan Dotson? Potentially. It's been a blast so far today hanging out with you, breaking down the deal. Desmond Ritter for uh, Rondell Moore. It, of course, it was our desert financial tr- uh, transaction of the day. Desmond Ritter coming from sure. Hotlanta to Phoenix. And Rondell Moore headed to the ATL uh, as they continue their careers and look for a change of scenery to help both of those players. Um, As always, you want the conversation to continue. Easiest way to do that. Uh, It doesn't stop with these mics going off and this show ending. Uh, Continues on the exclusive member Discord. The only way to access that is become a diehard at gophnx.com. We had a new diehard today. Uh, Got to shout them out at their... uh, just uh, unbelievable to see our ever-growing diehards out there. Um, so why, why can't I find who our diehards were? We had the addition earlier. Mm. Um, Let help, me find it for you. Help me out me here. Find it for you. Somebody talk why. I would help you, but I, I, I really don't know. I didn't see this one. But yeah. that's int- I, I mean, that's the best place to become an Arizona sports fan is in mm-hmm. our Discord. We talk ball constantly 24-7. You can... Log out. There will still be people talking ball in there. Copper and, uh, State Collector. Shout out right. at Amphi43. There he is. Amphi43 on Twitter. Huge. Copper State Collector. Officially official. Got the membership card. 
uh, got the whole box of, of gear that we give you when you become a diehard, including your choice of a free hat or free T-shirt that you get each and every year. Uh, become a diehard. Jess, she's in the Discord chat. She knows how fun it is. Uh, great show, guys. Peace, Dee Dee. Uh, Deuce said, I've been more impressed if they got Taylor Heineke. Pass on that. Do we have um, some super chats? We do. We have some super chats to get to? Okay. I don't want to go without those done. Um, love everybody with super chat. Adam is saying, Damon Dog Always. with the next man up mentality. Absolutely. That's what we, that's what we do. JV goes down and, and Damon Dog steps up. <laughs> Topic 64, friend of the show, MHJ, Brendan Rice, sign me up. Yeah, I don't hate it. It's a pretty Good stuff. solid tandem. I tell you what, a, uh, a luxury box in State Farm Stadium could feature Marvin Harrison Sr. and Jerry Rice, two of the greatest receivers of all time. <laughs> How crazy would that be? That would be insane. And you add Larry Fitzgerald to the mix, and you just got a trifecta there. Marcus jumping in. Need... You two to help my CHGO friend who thinks they're going to get MHJ. Uh, uh, it's, I, that, that's, it's tough to break through that. There, it's the cult of Justin Fields. It's strong, and it's going to take him actually being dealt for them to kind of wake up and get out of their uh, trance. Tommy Felix saying, would K-1 adjust his contract to keep Hollywood? I don't think he would have to. I, I just don't think it would It cost that much for Hollywood uh, to come back for Kyler to have to go rework his deal uh, and then Richard jumping in. Thank you, Richard, for the 199 Super Chat. With DJ gone, where is the old on O-line dinner at now? It's a great question. I know that uh, Justin Jones was talking about he loves the camaraderie of having his teammates over to talk ball, hang out, eat some good food. But he's on the defensive side of the football. We'll see. Jonah Williams, uh, he, he seems like he's a big team guy too, so maybe Jonah just picks up. But look, DJ Humphreys is going to be – Big shoes to fill. Uh, you, you don't just replace him, especially what he does and what he brings to that locker room right away. I want to know what Will Hernandez is cooking. I really do. Yeah. I bet you there's some good food there. He's a he's an El Paso boy, I believe. Yeah. G- good food out there. So I, I I bet that's a solid that's a solid O-line dinner. Yeah. Um other than that, I mean, there is some former Cardinals receiver news. Trent Sherfield just signed with the Vikings. We'll we'll leave you on Trent that. Trent Sherfield uh, played for the Cardinals. <laughs> yes. Yeah, man. I don't remember that at all. Thanks, to everybody in the chat. Uh, leave a like as you exit. Make sure you're subscribed to PHNX Sports on YouTube. And if you're listening on podcasts, drop a five star and review. We appreciate you all. Remember, tomorrow it's uh, Bo and Johnny in the morning. PHNX Cardinals at 10 a.m. tomorrow uh, as we're all gearing up for our special boy, Gerald Bourget, to tie the knot. So, Uh, We'll be hanging out with you in the morning. Have a great rest of your Thursday. We'll talk to you soon on PHNX Cardinals.